Yo, I am laying in bed. I'm tired. I'm actually ready for a nap. It's been a big day. I went for a walk this morning. Um, actually went on a really good walk through, what's it called? Over from Taronga Zoo, so that was pretty cool. And now I've just come back and I thought today would be the perfect time to do some questions and answers for you guys. Now, I don't know if anyone's gonna be coming on because it's the first time I've done a live in a group, but I thought, you know what? Might as well pop on here, see what any of you guys have any questions, because I've had a couple come through this week. And basically, I just wanna start it off first of all. Um, who has jumped on here? I can't even see who's come on. Anyways, so let me just get you started guys off with. So, while I'm laying here, rub my eye. Ugh, first question, hey Luke, what's going on buddy? Ah, oh, look at that, you made it, good on you. Kevin, what's going on? So. What I want to talk to you guys about first, one question I had is sleep hygiene. How do you get better sleep? Uh, Rachel asked me this today because she said, uh, yesterday, sorry, because she was struggling with it after our session. She said she needs to focus on the sleep. And she goes, you know, what do I need to get started with? What's going to be the best thing? And honestly, the first best thing you can start off when it comes to sleep hygiene is when you're actually going to sleep, making sure that you're eliminating all social media uh, watching TV, watching Netflix, all that stuff. Hey, Mark. Hey, Kev. All that stuff you want to cut out just before at least 15 to 30 minutes before you go to bed. Don't make it anything crazy. Don't try and cut it out an hour or a half an hour before. You've got to make it a realistic goal. And I'm so big on setting smart, realistic goals for yourself because otherwise you're not going to achieve it if you really are really, really better sleep. It's Yeah, it's 2.40 a.m., Luke. I don't know what you're doing awake, but you're watching me. I'm awake at um, four o'clock anyways. But yeah, so when you guys, you know, when it comes to improving sleep, the first thing you need to focus on is eliminating those screens at least 15 to 30 minutes before bed. Now, I've talked about it before. If you guys have downloaded F.Lux for your computer, for your Mac, you've got Night Shift on your iPhone that you can use. Those simple little things that you use, um, I'll actually explain it right now how to use Night Shift on your iPhone. So if you go to the settings and then you go down to lighting, then you can adjust the night shift setting. And when you go to night shift, what's gonna do is gonna change your screen temperature at night so it's from bright to dark. Bright to dark. And what happens there is it's gonna reduce the amount of light shining on your eyes because the blue light at night time is what keeps us up. So the first thing to prioritize your sleep hygiene is simply eliminating that blue screen 15 to 30 minutes before you go to bed. Use F.Lux and use um, and use your uh, night shift mode on your iPhone or on your Android, the same type of thing. Hey Chris, what's going on buddy? Good to see you there. And so they're really simple things for you guys to start off with to increase your sleep hygiene. Now, if you're not getting enough sleep, and let's say you know you wanna to go to bed at 10.30, but right now you're going to bed at 11.30. Well, instead of saying, I'm gonna try and go to bed from 11.30 until 10.30, set yourself 15 minute increments. So instead of going from 11.30, I'm gonna to go to bed at 11.15 every single night for the next two weeks. Once you've made that a habit, then you bump it to maybe 11.10 or 11.05 or 11 o'clock. But you don't try and jump from 11.30 until 10.30 because that's a whole hour. I mean, yeah, it's great if you could do it, but you do stuff in that hour. And so all of a sudden, if you have to cut that out because you don't wanna do it anymore, it's not that realistic. So always just try and make it a small, manageable goal just set it something as simply as that. So the first thing you wanna do when it comes to sleep hygiene is cut out those blue screens. Um, and also if you wanna to go to sleep a little bit earlier, just set an increment from, let's say about 10 minutes to 15 minutes before what you're doing now. So if you're going to bed at 11.30, get to bed at 11.15 or even 11.20. It may not seem like a big difference now, but let's say if you wanna to go to bed at 10.30 and every two weeks you're reducing it by 15 minutes, in just over two months, you're gonna be going to bed at 10.30 and it's gonna be so much more easier for you to stay on track when you made that simple change. Now, while I'm answering these questions, if any of you guys have any other comments down below, make sure to comment because um, I wanna be able to answer them on point, which is why I decided to do it in the group today. Another question I had was, why do I cut out caffeine every couple of weeks? And this one's pretty simple. One, I'm addicted to coffee, right? I fucking love coffee but I drink too much, it makes me jittery, it makes me crazy, and then when I start to get used to how much I'm drinking, I'll drink more and more and more, and then guess what happens? I don't sleep properly, and then I don't get focused, and then, you know, you, you know that point where you just, you're like, yeah, I'm having too much, okay? So I don't want that to happen to me. So what I do instead is I'll do three weeks of drinking coffee, whatever I wanna do, 
and then I'll have one week without coffee. Stephen, how you doing, buddy? How's our work been going? And so when I take that week off coffee, it's just the week. It's just not having any coffee. I just do decaf, and it just helps me reset myself so I'm not addicted to it all the time. And it also resets your adenosine receptors. So what that actually means, when you reset your adenosine receptors, that means that you're able to get a big stimulant hit with not as much as a need of coffee. Hey Nick, how you doing buddy? So let's say if you need three coffees to feel awake and feel awesome, and then all of a sudden you take it away for a week and you come back, you're probably only gonna need one or maybe two coffees to get the same hit. Like for me, I've had my week off and today I just went, Oh, nice one, Stephen. Sorry for me, what I said. Um, I just had my week off coffee, and I had one today, and I'm like, whoa, and like I just felt so good. And so when you can do things like that, you know, when you just cut it out a little bit, you're going to be absolutely fine. And it's not hard when you do it once. Like when you do that week without it, yeah, it's hard at the start, but then when you keep doing it, it's going to be easier and easier. Don't forget, guys, if you have questions, make sure to um, make sure to ask the question down below because I'm going to be answering them. And also, can you give this a thumbs up? Just make it a thumbs up because then more people see it in the feed and they can join. So just give it a like. Um, what else are the questions that I have? So yeah, so apart from that, um, it also resets your adenosine receptors, like I said. It helps you kind of just show yourself also that you're not addicted to caffeine because the worst thing is that we have to rely on caffeine. And no, thank you for the thumbs up. And then we don't want to have to rely on something like, you know, if you, like, let's say coffee went extinct, right? What are you going to do? You're going to get fucking crazy. So you've got to prove to yourself that you don't have to rely on stimulants like coffee or pre-workouts or any of that stuff to get you through the day. So if you guys are interested in, you know, kind of cutting out coffee, thank you. Thank you, guys. If you guys are interested in cutting out coffee, whoops, make sure to ask me because I will give you a little bit of a guide on how I do it. Actually... Do you guys want a guide on that? Do you want a guide on how to cut off coffee just for a week? Like simple little strategies you can do so you can avoid it. Or like so you can still get through the week but cut out coffee. If you do, just say down below like, yeah, I'd like to have a guide because I'll give it to you guys. Like I'm not stressed about it. I'll make up something but I'm not going to make it if nobody wants it. So if you see this later on and you're like, hey, I really, really want that. I, I want to know how Tyson does a week without coffee. Like does he have herbal teas? Does he have... Uh, green tea, what does he have? Just comment down below and I'll send it through to you. So that was the question about coffee. I went over the sleep. What other questions that I had this week? Oh, macronutrients. A lot of people are asking me, you know, like, my, yeah, all right, no worries, Chris. I'll do it for you, mate. Hello? Oh, am I still there? Yeah. Uh, a lot of people have been asking me lately. Sorry, Dad just tried to call me. He interrupted me. Damn it. Um, oh, fuck, what questions did I have? I just got blank out. Oh, macronutrients. Protein, carbohydrates, fats, all those type of things. Now, you let, look, they are important, right? When it comes to knowing your macronutrients, it's really, really important. But it depends on where you are in the journey. So if you don't know anything about macronutrients, don't worry about it at first. What we need to focus on for you is making sure that, you, first of all, is that you're eating enough or not too much food during the day. And this is where the portion sizes come up. Once we start looking at portion sizes, making sure you're getting enough at every meal, that's when we start to focus on macronutrients. So the reason for that is because macronutrients become, can become very overwhelming, and if you don't like to track, or if you just you know you, you don't have enough time as it is, there's no point in us trying to get through all the macronutrients, explaining how much protein, carbohydrates, and fats you need, tracking it through My Fitness Pal if you haven't mastered the basics first. So if you are wondering about macronutrients, before you get caught up in it, just start following the um, the meal uh, portion sizes that I talked to you guys about first because that's gonna give you the biggest bang for your buck. When you focus on the portion sizes and you start to get that habit in a place, when you start eating more veggies, when you start eating more lean sources of protein, we don't have to do that much changing when it comes to the macronutrients as long as you're following the portion sizes. And I've got the guide, well, I'm looking around, I've got the guide in the group. So if you guys you know, are looking for it, it is in the group and you just go to this, you have a look at the top or the right hand side where it says files and then you click on files and it'll have a calorie control guide and that's the one you want to use for there. So that'll be the easiest thing for you. Don't stress too much about the macronutrients at the moment. It'll give you an idea if you use My Fitness Pal, so you log in all your food and stuff, and it'll actually tell you what your macronutrients is at the end of the day. And 
you know, I've got a lot of people trying to get around that 100 grams of protein mark, which is good. And that's because they're the next level up. But if you're just starting at that level and you don't know whether you're eating enough, follow the portion control first while implementing it in with my intermittent fasting. No worries. Thank you, Chris. Have a good night, mate. If you've got any other questions, make sure to comment down. I'll answer it so you can go back and watch it later. But otherwise, I'll see you next time. So yeah, guys, they're pretty much the three questions I had this week. I think there was another one I'm just trying to remember. In the meantime, um, coffee, sleep, macronutrients. Was there one more? I don't think so. Well, if you guys have any other questions, whoever's watching. Oh, no, nah, yep. Can you guys still see me? Yeah, I think so. But yeah, so basically, we covered sleep, we covered macronutrients, we covered, um, what's the other one I talked about? Sleep, macronutrients, and the other thing. So I don't think anyone else has any questions, but I'm gonna be doing this once a week for you guys. I'm not sure which one's gonna be the best thing for you, so I'm gonna actually put up a poll to see what day people prefer, and then we can kind of go it from there. You can post me your questions, you can send through whatever you want and I'll answer them on the day. And that way you're going to know Tyson's going to be on here every single time at this time and we'll go from there. So, till next time, speak to you guys then.